Okay, welcome educators and administrators to the 2022 Energy Invitational Competition Orientation. We're happy to have you all this year. Um, not too many updates, just a few updates. Um, and of course, we hope that uh, this encourages you all to participate. Um, the more the merrier. Um, so we are officially celebrating our 13th year for high school participation in the Energy Invitational Competition. Um, as always, students will build a one-person electric vehicle and run it in a timed trial. Uh, students will be displaying and developing skills in manufacturing and assembly, computer modeling, engineering, analysis, research, testing, and personal and cost management. Uh, there are more skills with that as well, of course, is team building, uh, communication, um, as they go into presentation mode, which we'll go into more details about that. <clears throat> so specifically for registration, um, and please note the page numbers, uh, I will email out the packet along with the recording uh, so that we have all information in one uh, go. Um, for the official registration, um, it has now been extended and moved to January. Um, so we ask that you do register by Friday, January 20th. Um, we will ask for, of course, your student information so as you register, that's your email, phone number, of course, your district, <laughs> um, and then your estimate number of students and teams. Um, so if you do feel that you have one team uh, registered, um, but then you may uh, have a second team that shows some interest, um, please let me know before the registration fees are due. Um, so if you have one registered team and then you, again, you have a second team, maybe after January 20th, it's okay to email me or call me. I prefer you email me so that way it's on paper and we can get your registration count in, uh, updated. Um, for all teams, you must have an administrator support letter submitted. That letter is also in your packet. Um, a teacher is not allowed to sign this paper to participate. Uh, it must be a, a principal, an administrative director, CT director, someone in your district that works above you. Um, so that way they are aware that you are participating. And of course, if they have questions about cost. <laughs> um, specifically for the registration fees, they are due by Wednesday, February 22nd. So roughly one month after the registration day. Um, we are not extending the registration fee date uh, this school year. If your district has concerns or needs to talk with our vitally president about registration fee concerns, I encourage that you all let us know uh, in January or before the registration due date. Um, that way I can let the president know and they will, um, they'll review with our accounting office. Um, so again, with the registration fee, that will include your final count. So that's, again, if you have that additional team you want to add, all of your billing information, which will be sure that that is also a question that you need to fill out in your registration uh, sheet, um, and as well as your team roster. We're going to update the roster this year so that way you can mark on there who is your driver or if you have more than one driver as well as who are the additional students that will be in the hot pit, which will go over that count as well. <clears throat> and so for participation fees, um, for one vehicle and for your school to par participate, that is $2,000. Um, again, that fee does not cover any cost of cars or material. So please note that Vitalink is not providing any materials for you to build your cars. If you would like to include an additional car to participate, that is $500. Um, so for example, if it's one school with two cars, that will be a total of $2,500. And again, all fees must be paid by Wednesday, February 22nd, end of day, of course. Um, and then if you do need to withdraw from the competition for any reason, and you would still like to get your refund, um, you must send me an email by Friday, March 3rd. 
Again, that must be an email, not a phone call. It must be in written format. So that way we can forward it to your district to confirm that they're able to receive their refund if it's by that date. After March 3rd, unfortunately, um, you can still withdraw, but you won't be able to get a refund. And for advisor responsibilities, uh, please note that the advisor is the educator or lead uh, adult in charge. <laughs> um, so the advisor, of course, must make sure that they have their administrative letter signed. Again, the teacher is not allowed to sign that. It must be an admin or above. Um, and the admin support letter is page 17 in your packet, which again will be provided in your email. Um, and that is due the day that you make your payment. Uh, so at least uh, by or before Wednesday, February 22nd. Um, and if you have any questions on where to submit that, you can email that directly to Gabe. Uh, and Gabe Torres is here on the call. If not Gabe, then myself. That's fine. <laughs> we'll uh, have it in your folder for you. Um, and again, if you have any questions or concerns about your payment, um, we will make sure that you are copied in your email with your CTE director, who we've been advised to go to for payment. Um, so that way you will know who your director is. Um, and if you have any questions about if your payment has been submitted, um, if they're on top of it, if they have it in before the deadline, uh, feel free to email myself and um, I'll make sure to keep them copied and we'll let you know if your payment has already been paid or submitted. Um, yes. And then to, um, and then specifically for waivers, um, and, and I'll have an example of these as well. Um, um, some of you might be familiar with our Vitalink waiver. So those are the media waivers. Um, so if we're allowed to take photos of your students, if not, that's fine. If their parents say no, we just give them a bright highlighter wristband. Um, we also will have a code of conduct waiver um, that includes that your uh, student has agreed that they will be well behaved throughout all of the uh, um, events that includes presentation, safety inspection, and competition day. Again, if they do not abide by the rules, we will have to remove them from the competition. Um, we will also need, of course, a copy of student health insurance forms if they're in the hot pit area. And the student who is driving, of course, a copy of their driver's license. Um, and then also the liability waiver, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. It's the full long packet that we ask all students to sign. Um, and so we will have copies of those for you, which we'll touch on as well. Um, for the specific waiver that you must pick up, we cannot email that. Um, and I have a copy of those. I can take a picture and send you the front copy. I cannot send you the entire copy. Um, but you must pick those up from the Vitalink office um, due to that being a specific liability waiver that keeps your students safe. Um, this is in case any cars slip over, if a car catches on fire or anything else. Um, of course, we will have a medic on site, um, but that is a waiver that you must pick up in person. Uh, so as well in your email, I will send out a doodle. Uh, this is for educators uh, that you can select a time in uh, a date uh, between Monday and Friday, of course, uh, to come pick up your designated waivers. We would need you, of course, to register so that way we have the correct number uh, ready for you to pick up. Okay, and then here's our major updates that we have. Um, not too bad, though, of course. Um, so for design brief and video, um, these are, of course, are still due on a Sunday. That is March 5th, 2023. Um, so your team uh, will receive a Google Drive folder that we ask you to share with your team leader. Um, so that's where they will upload their video report. Um, they can literally copy the YouTube link and paste it, or they can email Gabe the YouTube link. Um, that video report well, uh, still needs to be between two, uh, 50 or three minutes. Um, I do encourage you all to read through the packet in great detail so that we know what information needs to be covered in their video. Um, and that video presentation is now worth 50% of the 
Um, so we do expect professionalism for students to understand the information they're explaining. Um, so that way, if there are any questions from the judges, um, they are ready to go and they know exactly what they're talking about and they're confident, of course. Um, and then for the design PowerPoint presentation, students don't have to submit this in case they have any last minute edits the morning of, but it is worth 50% of the team score. Um, again, I do suggest reading through the packet. We have details broken down uh, for what it needs to be covered in your presentations. That includes the video and the PowerPoint presentation. Um, uh, pictures are fun, but details um, are best. Um, if they do have pictures in their presentation, as long as the students are confident and able to explain exactly what they've added, that's perfect. Now for the design brief written report, it's still due. Um, as for this competition, district has asked us to have a written assignment. So we still have this due. There is no page limit though. So that's an update for you. Now that does not mean submit one page because <laughs> um, this will be considered a tiebreaker. Um, so for example, on March 8th, when students have their presentation day, if a group in team, uh, if a team in group one presents and they receive 10 points and a group in room three receives 10 points, then the judges will both review their written report and they will go based off the amount of work, amount of effort and explanation that they have given in those written reports to break the tie. If um, any students have questions about the written report or about their video presentation, please let us know and we'll get you all in contact with our task force so they can review with you in greater detail. Um, again, the pages that we asked you all to review for those details is pages nine through 16 in the packet that we'll send you. And that will go over the specific design review points, how to organize and uh, review the guidelines, the specific design presentation rubric, which the judges will be using, as well as the points for the technical inspection. And again, please save the date for the presentation day, which is a Wednesday, March 8th, via Zoom from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, teachers do not have to be on this Zoom call. However, we do encourage that you make sure your students who are on the teams and ready to present are ready and available in case they're in another class please send a note to the principal or counselor that they are available and ready and that they are on a computer ready to present. You'll re receive reminder emails as well, weeks in advance, the week before and the week of. So trackside and hot pick areas. Um, so we've just updated the name uh, trackside area, which is previously the cold pit. Um, again, this is where your teams may be in their, um, under their tent, working on their cars, making some updates. Um, all students that are participating in the competition and specifically in the cold pit area must have all signed waivers um, and the liability forms. Um, those are the signed insurance forms in case there's an accident that happens in the trackside area. For hot pit area, please note, no more than five team members. That includes the driver. Um, if you can also let parents know this, um, this past competition year, uh, we had a few parents that were concerned uh, about their students not participating in the hot pit side. Um, and so if you have any parents that want to assist in this competition, um, please make sure they're aware of the rules as well. This is for their safety and for the student's safety. So again, no more than five team members, including the driver and hot pit area as they enter the track. Um, all students, again, even in hot pit area and track site area must have all waivers and signed forms. Any member entering the hot pit area must have a submitted copy of their health insurance card. That means they can literally take a photo and email it to us ahead of time, or they can have that photocopy available the morning of the technical inspection day or competition day ready to submit to us. 
The driver specifically must have a copy of their driver's license and their health insurance card. It must be a driver's license. There's no exceptions. Students will be given wristbands the morning of the competition to identify which area they're allowed to enter. We will have Vitalink staff as well as volunteers monitoring which wristbands are in which areas so we don't have any students or parents entering the hot pit area during race time. For technical safety inspection, please note that is a Saturday, April 22nd, 2023. This is two weeks before the competition date. All email waivers, liability forms, copy of health insurance and driver's license must be um, sent over or available by the technical safety inspection day, which again, that is April 22nd. For educators is the gentle reminder, please be sure that you email me or contact me as soon as possible after you register and review with your admin the day that you would like to come in and pick up your specific waiver and insurance forms. Again, I will send a doodle out as well if that works better for you through email. Um, again, these waivers are mandatory for any students to participate, even if they're in the track side area. Um, and the technical safety inspection is mandatory for teams to participate in the competition. Failing to attend the, the technical safety inspection will disqualify the team. Um, if you need to receive schedule due to your team being unavailable, please let me know. I will put you in contact with the judges and it will be on your terms to set the date to complete your technical safety inspection. There is a specific sheet in your packet from pages 14 to 16 that the inspectors need to sign and complete and you must hand to the Vitaling team on the day of competition for your team to participate. If you know of any specific dates that might restrict your team from participating, please let us know by registration date, which is again, January 20th. The location at this time is to be determined um, I'll, uh, we are looking, we're on the hunt, of course, for flat surfaces, no hills, no grass, of course. Um, if you all have any suggestions or have seen anything that is affordable, <laughs> feel free to email it to me. We'll be happy to do some research. Um, and for the technical safety inspection, snacks and water will be provided. Before I move forward, did anyone have any questions about technical safety inspection? Okay, great. All right, and then specifically for competition race day, this is a Saturday, May 6th. We're asking for all teams and their vehicles to arrive at 8 a.m. This will allow you time to drop your cart under your tent as well as complete check-in. All cars must be signed off during technical safety inspection in order to participate. And again, Vitalink must have that specific form signed by the judge and in hand for your team to participate. That'll be for each car that is participating from your school. School date restrictions. Again, so if you have um, students participating in testing, proms, other competitions, please let us know by January 20th so we can make accommodations and if we need to move the race day. And again, for morning for check-in, Vitalink student waiver forms, copy of health insurance, driver's license. Our goal is to have the location confirmed by February. So that way you all are prepared and ready. Um, and of course, in Orange County. We will have breakfast snacks, lunch, and water provided on competition race day. And then these are just important dates that we have um, that we've mentioned throughout the meeting. 
You will receive a copy of this PowerPoint as a PDF as well um, to mark your calendars. Um, so this is just a brief summary of those bullet points and dates for you all. And then for contact information, um, I do have my colleague Gabe Torres, who's always a phone call away. You can bug them all year. Um, and if Gabe doesn't get to you, feel free to call me or email me directly. Um, I'm happy to help. Um, again, Vitalink is here to help you if you do have questions um, about uh, cost, participating, or if you have date concerns. Um, if you have technical concerns, still let us know, but we can get you in touch with our task force um, who work directly with this competition in the past couple of years. So they're well-versed and we have a good idea of how to help you and move forward. Um, I do want to note as well, this year, mentors are not required. Um, but if you do have a mentor, feel free to work with them in your free time. Um, also, if you have a mentor that you want to participate in the presentation day or on the race day, uh, put them in contact with me so we can get them signed up and we can review their part in the competition. Okay, that'll be all. Um, feel free to throw questions at me whenever you're ready. Um, but again, we'll send an email out with this recording. Um, that email will also include a PDF of the PowerPoint slide that you all viewed today. Um, I will have a front picture copy of the packet waiver that you all must pick up in person. Again, I'm not allowed to send that digitally due to the liability that you all must read through it with a Vitalink member. Um, and I'll also send out a doodle, um, which is just you selecting which date and time work best for you to come pick up your number of packets after you register. So I want to make sure I have all the copies that you need for your team. Um, and that's about it. Let me know if I missed anything or any questions, of course. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, bring something up. Uh, whenever, when you guys uh, get the PDF with all of, of the details that Ori is talking about, uh, make sure they go through the uh, FAQ, the frequently asked questions, all of the technical uh, updates. There are some uh, some things that are different uh, this year, and uh, the task force, as Ori mentioned, have been working hard and making sure that. It is as straightforward as possible, as fair as possible, because uh, measuring things is uh, is the toughest part. The biggest thing on here is going to be that the uh, psychoanalyst is required for each car, and it is required with the standard shunt. So if you had a vehicle before that uh, you had, maybe you had a psychoanalyst, but you had a different shunt or you had a different energy meter, and uh, but I used this before, why can't I use it now? Every vehicle is going to be required to use the, the cycle analyst with this, their stock shunt. And uh, there'll be links to that. It is uh, relatively inexpensive. Uh, I'll think, you know, when you consider every, uh, how much everything else costs and uh, fairly straightforward to put in as well. Um, so anyway, just want to make sure they keep that. In, and I'm, gonna, I'm sure it's going to be repeated often because it's, uh, it'll be a disqualifying uh, feature if you don't have it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ed. Um, does anyone else have any questions that they'd like to review? I had a couple of questions. Yes, um, one was on the course. Um, you kind of left that open ended. Um, I think the last couple of races have been at UCI. Mm -hmm. um, is that the likely location or unlikely location? Um, it's unlikely at this point, um, you know, due to some pricing increases. Um, our goal, however, is to still keep the racetrack as close as possible um, with the same radius turns. Um, so again, once we get that location confirmed, my goal, of course, is to have that confirmed by February. We will have the racetrack map available for your team, um, if not by February, then by March. Um, so that way your team can practice as much as possible. But yeah, we'll definitely have a map for you all. I'll write that down as well. Um, and a second question was, uh, do you have any idea how many, how many cars you're going to have at this point? And, you know, I'm just trying to, I, I think we had 10 or 12 cars last year. That's kind of getting down to the small size. 
Mm-hmm. And just, it's, it's a race that we really like. Um, so we're also looking at, you know, what ways can we potentially help uh, competitors if there's issues with, you know, districts or teams that you know of that have interest but might be struggling, there might be ways that we can help them out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do know as of right now, we have 10 age educators that are interested. Um, so I'll say there, then that's 10 cars. Um, I know some educators, maybe one or two may have two cars. Um, but what we'll do is um, we typically make an, a social media announcement um, by January or February of the specific number altogether. Um, so that way our sponsors know as well. Um, but our goal, of course, is to stay under 20, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, so that way it makes keeps the day short and moving. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that'll be all. Normally, no one registers more than three cars, though. They typically only pull their third one out by, by the refund day. But, John, you've got a good point. And uh, I think all of us have the ability you know, re- to reach out uh, to mm-hmm. our colleagues, uh, whether you see somebody at a conference or that you know. I was like, hey, you, I know you. I know your program. You should be doing this. Um, Especially if, if we've done it before, uh, I've had people uh, come by and they get over, uh, they feel overwhelmed. Oh my God, we can't have this within the time frame, and mm-hmm. and and that's fine if they, if they truly feel that way. But it'd be great for them to go through the whole process or as much of the process as possible, so that we can build it for for next. You know, have them uh, on the hook for uh, for next year. Mm-hmm. Um, that the, the main reason why everything went from three classes back when uh, you know, we first started down to just one and it's you know as, as straightforward as possible as inexpensively as possible it's not cheap by any means but it's still the cheapest way to do it is so that we can get more um, more vehicles in here uh, if yeah. you just le- if you left it wide open with you know different classes etc then you would end up uh, with probably fewer people because at the end of it it'd be all oh, whoever's got you know the most money is gonna be able to do it uh, we don't necessarily want that but uh, I tell anybody and everybody that uh, that could possibly be interested um, when people are people are spending CTE money right now and they're trying to find ways to do so. I mean, this is uh, this is great. So I think uh, John, uh, you know, like you and I are in a, the best place to do just that and invite people over. Show them, you know, show them your cars. Uh, this is what we've done, and uh, what's the easiest, most straightforward way to jump in. Yeah, and I'd comment if there's any educators on the line here that are, you know, waffling on this, it, you know, we're we're certainly willing to help. We uh, we'd like to see more tech participants. Uh, we'd like to see a really strong, healthy program. Perfect. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Yeah.